Hello students and welcome to Preliminary Chemistry and the Chemical Earth topic. In this video we're going to look at nomenclature of salts. Now one of the unusual um, things that you're required to do as part of your chemistry course is to learn how to name different types of compounds. This comes up a couple of different times and most of the time when it does we kind of have to just learn the rules as we go along. So I thought I'd put one quick video together to give you a little bit of an idea about some of these important rules. So firstly, inorganic salts are compounds that have been formed between two different ions, two different charges. Ionic compounds are formed when two oppositely charged particles attract one another. These are Positively charged particles called cations. I know it looks like cations, but it's actually pronounced cations. And negatively charged ions, which are called anions. And again, it looks like anions, but that ion is, is um, emphasized in each of these two words. So cations and anions. So in the first compound that we've got here, we've got sodium, which is the cation, so it's the positive, and chlorine which is the anion, which is the negative. When we're looking to name these, we don't just call them sodium chlorine, we change the ending. So this chlorine changes from an I-N-E to an I-D-E. So we call it sodium chloride. And I'm sure it's a compound that you're already familiar with. In the second example, we have magnesium, which is the cation. In this case, it actually has a two plus charge and oxygen, and it has a two minus charge. So magnesium is the cation and oxygen is the anion. And again, these two attract one another to form the compound magnesium oxide. In this case, the oxygen again has changed its name to be an oxide. Now in the third example, we actually have a, something that's a little bit more complex. If you look at the previous two, and we kind of split them down the middle, you can see that there is a cation, which appears first, and an anion, which appears second. Sodium and magnesium are the two cations, and the chlorine and the oxygen are the two anions. In the third example, copper is the cation, so we would start with the name copper. But in the second part of this, the anion here, this is formed by a complex containing sulfur and oxygen. Now, if it was just sulfur, it would be called sulfide. If it was just oxygen, it would be called oxide. But when they occur together in this particular format, SO4, we call it a sulfate. And there are several rules around how we name compounds of a particular element which is combined with oxygen and the ATE here is actually indicating the presence of oxygen in this ion. So the correct name for CuSO4 is copper sulfate. You can get a clue to help you out with some of this naming of course from your periodic table. So let's just quickly review how we name these inorganic salts. The first part of the name is the cation. Now the cation is the positive ion and it's formed usually by the loss of one or more electrons. Cations are always named first. Their name appears first and they keep their full name. Sodium, potassium, hydrogen, calcium. These are all examples of cations. The second part of the name is the anion part of the name. So the anions are the negative ions, and they're formed by the gaining of one or more electrons. They are always named second, and their names will change. Very importantly, the name of the anion will change depending on the composition. So as we saw in, in uh, two slides earlier, if the element is alone, it changes from an INE to an IDE. So chlorine becomes chloride. Fluorine becomes fluoride, iodine becomes iodide, and oxygen becomes oxide. A slight change there, but the same basic rule. However, if an element is combined with oxygen to form the anion, then we have an ATE or an ITE ending, 
uh, and the rules around that are actually related to the number of oxygens. And it's not important for you to know how that happens at the moment, but we do want to just learn how to name these. So if it's SO4, it's sulfate. If it's SO3, it's sulfite. These are some of the examples of different types of polyatomic ions. And unfortunately, when we're looking at these, there's no simple way of trying to um, construct them yourself. You're just going to need to put a little table together and include each of these. The hydroxide ion, OH minus, has a negative one charge. The nitrate ion, NO3, has a one minus charge. The carbonate ion, CO3, two minus, a two minus charge. The phosphate ion is a PO4-3 minus charge. Of all of these ions, only one of them is a cation, and it's this one is a cation. It's ammonia, NH4+, plus, the ammonium ion, not ammonia, ammonium, ammonium. Ammonia, ammonia is NH3, and it's a compound not an ion, but the ammonium ion is a one plus charge in a cation. But the sulfate ion and the hydrogen carbonate ion, sometimes called the bicarbonate ion, are also all anions. So all of these common ions uh, are, are complexes of uh, usually two or more atoms joined together that have an overall charge. So a quick exercise for you. You can stop the recording if you want and have a go at these yourself. Um, and then compare your answers with the ones that I give you. So the first one is sodium, let's go back to a white, sodium fluoride. The second one is one we looked at previously, magnesium oxide. The third one is aluminium sulfide. The fourth one is copper sulfate. And the last is calcium bromide. Now the ones and twos and the namings of each of these will become more important as we go further into nomenclature. Thanks for watching.